Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, so I will be talking about the GPU porting of the West code, which is a code for large material simulations based on uh, many body perturbation theory. So uh, this work was done with Marco Gavoni, and we are both from the material science division of Argon National Lab. So to put our code development into context, uh, in our group, we use first principles uh, simulations to study electronic structures for both the ground state and excited state uh, properties. And we are particularly interested in uh, not only small molecules, but also very large and heterogeneous systems. Uh, this is motivated by our target applications, for example, nanoparticles for uh, energy harvesting and a solid liquid interface for uh, water splitting and also spin defects in semiconductors for uh, quantum technologies. So shown on this page are just some examples of the nanostructures and uh, materials which we would like to simulate uh, at the many body perturbation theory level. So to do that, we have developed a code package called West, which means without empty states. So it is a, a parallel implementation of uh, many body perturbation theory, including GW and BSE. Uh, and uh, what uh, distinguishes West from uh, conventional GW uh, codes is that it uses a formalism that does not require any submission over empty orbitals. So this submission uh, is quite ex expensive and it's avoided in West. And uh, it does not require the storage or the inversion of very large matrices, which are widely used in conventional GW codes. So the CPU version of West uh, scales very well on uh, CPU-based supercomputers. So uh, for example, the largest uh, GW calculation uh, performed with West consists of uh, over 2000 electrons. So the functionalities of the code uh, is summarized on this plot. And so uh, it's uh, capable of computing uh, GW and electron phonon self energies. And in addition, it can simulate excitation processes uh, using density matrix perturbation theory, which includes BSE and time-dependent density functional theory. And also it has a uh, quantum defect embedding theory, which targets uh, strongly correlated defect states in semiconductors. Uh, so the code is written in uh, Fortran and it's interfaced with other electronic structure codes through a Python layer called WestPy and also through uh, widely used data formats like JSON, XML, and HDF5. And also it uh, leverages uh, community frameworks like TensorFlow for uh, machine learning and also uh, Qiskit for uh, simulations on quantum computers. Uh, so finally, uh, this code is uh, parallel. It has MPI plus MPMP and the CPU version scales to over 500,000 CPU cores. And uh, last year, we uh, ported the uh, West code to NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, so uh, it's tested and benchmarked on a number of GPU-enabled uh, supercomputers, including uh, Promoter at NERSC and also uh, Summit at Oak Ridge. So our porting strategies are the following. So Wherever applicable, we try to use uh, window optimized GPU libraries for uh, the uh, linear algebra operations like uh, BLAS and FFT. And when uh, for loops that cannot be uh, done by existing libraries, we use a directive based approach, uh, hoping that it's more portable than lower level languages. So we started from CUDA Fortran, which are super easy to write, but uh, it's not portable. Uh, and then uh, in the latest release of the code, we transitioned from CUDA Fortran to OpenCC. Uh, and uh, as the next step, we are switching to OpenMP target upload, uh, which should work on NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel GPUs. So in terms of achievements, uh, we are able to get a big speed, speed up uh, by using GPUs over the CPU only version. Uh, which I'll show you in a minute. 
And uh, the code scales very well on uh, GPU supercomputers, uh, including Summit and Promoter uh, and Theta GPU. And uh, one of the largest uh, GW calculation we have done using the GPU version actually consists of over 10,000 electrons. So um, next, I will talk about some examples of how GPUs are being utilized in the West code. Uh, so shown here is uh, perhaps the most important algorithm in the West code, which is the so-called PDAP algorithm. So it computes the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the static dielectric matrix by an iterative uh, algorithm. So uh, the pseudo code here has multiple loops. So the outmost loop uh, is sequential. It cannot be done in parallel, but all the inter, uh, inner loops can be done in parallel. So in the CPU version of West, uh, we had two levels of parallelization. So in the first level, we distribute the perturbations, which are more or less independent from each other. Uh, we distribute them across uh, images which are nothing but uh, subgroups of the uh, MPI ranks. And then uh, in the inner loop, we distribute the plane wave uh, components across MPI ranks within an image. And then uh, like shown here, uh, for each image, we perform parallel uh, Fourier transform and other linear algebra uh, operations uh, in parallel. So this works very well on CPUs. Uh, so naively, we were thinking uh, maybe we can, uh, for each MPI rank, we offload the work to a GPU, which would lead to a picture like this. So now we are distributing the plane wave coefficients uh, across multiple GPUs, and therefore we are performing FFTs on many GPUs. Uh, but this does not work uh, because uh, parallel FFTs uh, require auto all communications, uh, which means that uh, the GPUs have to talk with each other uh, quite frequently. And uh, as we know, uh, the computation on a GPU is uh, much more uh, faster than the communication between GPUs. So we want to avoid uh, data communication between GPUs. So to make it happen, we just uh, exposed the other two levels of parallelism to our uh, code. So we enabled uh, two more parallelization levels. The first one is the loop over spin channels. And the second one is a loop over uh, wave functions. And by doing that, uh, so why does this help? Is because it uh, basically it further partitions the MPI ranks within a image into even smaller subgroups of uh, ranks so that each uh, working group becomes smaller. So uh, now, uh, so here is just an example. So instead of eight GPUs work together for parallel FFTs, now only two GPUs collaborate on parallel FFTs and linear algebra. So by doing this, we can reduce uh, the GPU-GPU communication, which is uh, quite costly and also they can better load balance the uh, workload on each uh, GPU. So ideally, we don't want to split uh, any FFT op operation over two GPUs. So if memory is not a limitation, we want to do uh, FFT on a single GPU. Uh, that's how we get the best performance. But when FFTs, uh, I mean, when the problems uh, getting bigger, we are limited by device memory, then we have to split FFTs across GPUs, but we use the least number of GPU for each FFT, and we distribute the workload uh, by using the other levels of partisan in the algorithm. So uh, on this page, uh, I'm showing you the a comparison of our baseline uh, GPU code, which is a uh, black bar on this plot. Uh, to the version with all the levels of parallelization enabled, which is the red bar. So uh, this is a GW calculation of a silicon water uh, interface with roughly uh, 1,500 electrons. Uh, so we can see that we are able to get a 50% performance improvement by uh, using more levels of parallelization and uh, reducing, uh, restricting the parallel FFTs on one GPU. 
So another uh, approach to speed up the code is to use non-blocking uh, MPI functions and async GPU kernels to uh, overlap GPU communication and computations. So uh, an example shown here is uh, somewhere in the code, we are uh, computing the matrix mult multiplication of two distributed matrices. And the color here just means that uh, the matrices are distributed on different MPI ranks. So our first version uh, is very straightforward. So what we do is we copy the uh, local data from CPU to GPU, and then uh, we multiply uh, the local block on GPU, and then uh, we use a MPI communication to uh, get the next block to be multiplied. And uh, the timeline of this approach is shown here. So uh, red means the uh, uh, CPU to GPU copy, and blue means the uh, GPU computation, and uh, orange is the time spent on MPI. So uh, then we can optimize uh, this code by using uh, non-blocking MPI communication, which means that uh, while the GPU is doing the computation uh, in the background, the CPU is uh, doing MPI communication to pre prepare the next uh, block of matrix. So uh, by doing this, we can hide the cost of the GPU computation behind the uh, MPI communication. Uh, and uh, actually, we found that the MPI communication part, uh, which in this case is more expensive than the computation itself. So the communication can be further uh, speed up by communicating the data in single precision. So what we do is uh, we, uh, before MPI uh, communication, we convert the data uh, from double precision to single precision. And then we do the uh, MPI communication in single precision. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, doing this doesn't change the uh, physical observables we are calculating, but uh, it leads to a uh, roughly a factor of two speed up in the MPI communication. Uh, so let's go back to the silicon water interface model. And uh, we can see that by utilizing single precision in uh, some operations in the code, including the MPI communication I just mentioned, and also some FFT operations, uh, we got a additional speed up uh, to the uh, version two. And overall, we got 1.9x compared to the baseline. And again, the uh, GW energies are matching the double precision numbers very well. Uh, and then uh, finally, we also did some relatively low level optimizations to fine tune the GPU memory access and also uh, IO uh, operations. And we ended up with a fourth version of the GPU code, which is 2.2x faster than our baseline. So next, uh, let's look at uh, how the code scales on uh, supercomputers. So uh, this page shows a, a benchmark of a uh, cadmium selenide uh, nanoparticle, uh, which has about uh, 900 electrons. So uh, this plot compares uh, this uh, computing GW cross particle energies for this nanoparticle on different uh, supercomputers. So on the right hand side, uh, there are the old NERSC uh, CPU machines, uh, including the retired Edison and uh, Corey Haswell. So the code scales uh, quite nicely, uh, but on the left, left side, you can see by using GPUs, uh, it's much faster. So uh, if we compare the same number of nodes uh, of uh, Summit, which is uh, the orange uh, symbols, and Corey Haswell, which is uh, the uh, purple triangles, we got a 30x speed up. Uh, and uh, so uh, as mentioned in the previous talks, uh, switching from uh, Summit to Permutter, uh, or in other words, from the V100 GPUs to a100. So uh, with exactly the same code, we got another uh, factor of two, uh, which we think is because uh, A100 has more device memory, so we can fit more data onto the GPU without uh, staging back uh, on the CPU. And also it has higher memory bandwidth and even uh, double precision tensor cores. Uh, and uh, the scaling on the uh, summit and promoter are also uh, quite nice. They uh, both they are close to the ideal strong scaling indicated by the dashed line. 
So now let's uh, look at a bigger uh, benchmark on Summit. So uh, this one is uh, uh, two silicon supercell models, one with 1,000 atoms and the other with 1,700 atoms. Uh, so again, we see the strong scaling on Summit uh, looks quite nice. Uh, so basically, uh, the bigger system with 1,700 uh, atoms scales better uh, because it has mo more uh, competition to do. And uh, it's, again, quite close to ideal scaling. And uh, with 94% uh, of the uh, entire Summit machine, which means 25,000 NVIDIA V100 GPUs, we were able to solve 80 uh, cross particle energy levels of this big silicon supercell in about half an hour. So uh, last, uh, I'd like to show you some uh, production calculations uh, done with the GPU version of uh, West. So shown on this page are three very large GW calculations, a large nanoparticle with more than 2000 electrons and uh, a giant uh, silicon silicon nitride interface with over 10,000 electrons, and then a, a spin defect in 4H silicon carbide uh, with uh, 6,000 electrons. And those calculations were done using production settings, not some uh, loose, uh, inaccurate settings. So, and we are not only computing a few uh, energy levels, but we computed uh, thousands of cross particle energies to plot the local density of states uh, as shown here. So uh, this shows that uh, the uh, GPU version of West uh, can be used to solve very large problems that can hardly be done on uh, CPUs only. So to wrap up, uh, so we have ported the West code, uh, the GW part of West to NVIDIA GPUs. And uh, we achieved very good performance and uh, scalability on GPU accelerated supercomputers, including Promoter. Uh, so we carried out some large GW calculations uh, of which the largest one uh, has 10,000 uh, electrons running on 25,000 NVIDIA GPUs. So uh, recently we ported the quantum embedding part of VEST to GPUs. So we are still testing its performance on Promoter. Uh, so the initial results look quite promising. And we also plan to port the other functionalities like the BSE code and electron phonon code to GPUs. And finally, we uh, want to uh, make sure the code works not only for NVIDIA GPUs, but uh, also for AMD and Intel ones. So to achieve this, we are moving to uh, from OpenCC to OpenMP target upload. So uh, we want to uh, make code work on the X-scale machines like Aurora at Argon and Frontier at Oak Ridge. So uh, here are the people and organizations who helped us on this project. Uh, in particular, we, we are part of the NIS, uh, NERSC NISAP uh, project. And thanks to this project, we got uh, help from uh, NERSC expertise and also we got early access to Cori GPU and Promoter, which are invaluable resources to us. Uh, okay, I think I'll stop here and let me know if you have any questions.